Hi, my name's Dave Coulson and today we're going to have a look at hoverfly lagoons, which are something most people have never heard of. So there are some types of hoverfly that have aquatic larvae. They, the larvae live in little puddles. Um, traditionally or classically in rot holes in trees. So if a big old dead tree starts to kind of fall apart and you get little puddles forming in the crooks in the branches or where the trunks split open and they're full of dead leaves and that's where these hoverflies like to, to live. Um, but we don't have many big old dead trees lying around the landscape so sometimes they struggle to find anywhere to breed but it's really easy to provide them with a home um, even if you've only got a tiny outdoor space by making a hoverfly lagoon and at its simplest they couldn't be simpler and they're certainly very cheap to make, free. Um, so all you need is any kind of waterproof container. This is just a chopped off milk bottle as you can probably work out. Um, but anything will do. Uh, it doesn't want to be too big. A uh, bucket. Um, this is a biggish one from a, I made from an old cooking pot. Um, so let me just show you. All you need to do, it's the simplest thing in the world, is get your container, stuff some leaves in it. So these are happen to be comfrey leaves, which work really well. Nettle leaves work pretty well, but pretty much any leaves will do. So you stuff them in your pot, put a few sticks in, bits of bamboo, or these are just twigs from some bushes in the garden. Um, and then chuck in some water. This is just rainwater, but tap water will do. And it's as easy as that. Bob's your uncle. That is a hoverfly lagoon. Now you just leave it in a quiet corner of the garden where it's not going to get kicked over. And as the leaves start to rot, it smells. It smells pretty rank, I must admit. Comfrey in particular is really whiffy. It smells a bit like sewage. So put it in a corner of the garden away from the house. But the smell attracts the female flies. And they're really beautiful, some of them. Uh, and so they'll come, they'll lay their eggs usually on the sticks or around the uh, edge of the pot uh, and they hatch into these amazing little larvae. The old fashioned name for them is rat-tailed maggots which doesn't really do them any favours, it makes them sound slightly disgusting really. Um, but actually they're kind of, kind of beautiful and uh, there's been an attempt to kind of rebrand them as long-tailed larvae. Uh, this is the mission of Ellie Rotheray who uh, is the person who invented the hoverfly lagoon. All credit to Ellie. So, that's how to make one. All you need to do is leave it and with, usually within just a week you'll have hoverflies laying eggs. And so here's one I made earlier, a slightly more attractive version. Uh, this is just an old ceramic pot that I found in the garden. And this has been set up for about a month so I'm hoping we've got some some beasties in it. So I'm going to tip it out and have a hunt through, hunt through and see if we can find some long-tailed larvae. Lots of nice slime in the bottom from the uh, rotted down. Oh yeah, so now crawling with little beasties. We'll have to come in for a close-up but we have some lovely juicy long-tailed larvae, rat-tailed maggots, whatever you want to call them. Really cool. Right, we'll do a close-up now. So look here and here. Got two big juicy rat-tailed maggots. Let me just see if I can pick them out there. Delicate little little things. There we go, look at that. What a handsome beastie. Doesn't like being out of the water obviously, so I'll pop it back in in a second. They're kind of semi-transparent so you can see their innards as they wriggle. So this is the breathing tube, it's a snorkel basically. So the larvae normally hides in the murky liquid where it can't be eaten by a bird. And it just has this long tail, which actually is telescopic. This it can stretch a lot further than that. 
uh, that goes up to the surface and that's how it how it breathes but, uh, you see there's one here with its tail out going to the surface may be hard to spot but uh, um, let's just have a look if we've got any more in here quite a few mosquito larvae as well not quite sure what this oh dear that's that's a, that's a dead shrew that's less attractive poor thing oh look there's a whole gaggle of rat tailed larvae here. One, two, three, four, five, six nice big ones. They should be almost ready to pupate fairly soon. When they do, they crawl out of the lagoon and plop down outside it uh, to form a little pupae, and then a few days after that, they uh, hatch into a rather splendid fly. So, there you have it, give it a go. There's an extra little detail. Um, so here I've got, it's just a, um, an old washing up bowl with holes drilled in the bottom and some uh, wood chip in it. Uh, you could use sawdust or dead leaves. Um, if you take your beautiful hoverfly lagoon and put it in something like this, when the maggots uh, ready to pupate, they'll climb out, they'll drop down into the wood chip and it gives them a nice place for them to pupate, they'll happily pupate there. And you can hunt around, if you look every few days amongst the, whatever you've got in the bottom of here, with a bit of luck you'll find uh, the, the little pupae, which are actually surprisingly cute, you wouldn't think fly pupae could be cute, but trust me they are, they look like little tiny brown mice. They, they still have the tail of the maggot, but it's kind of hardened and usually curled like a little tail. And they have two uh, kind of ears at the front that actually are the, the breathing holes for the pupae. Um, and actually you can take it a step further and if you then collect any pupae that you find, put them in a jam jar with a couple of holes for ventilation, put them on a, a shady windowsill and keep an eye on it and they'll hatch and you'll see uh, these beautiful hoverflies. Uh, and you'll be able to identify them if you try. Um, you could also take part in, there's a, um, a kind of national study going on being run by the Buzz Club called the, the Hoverfly Lagoon Project, uh, which is asking people to, to try out um, making a hoverfly lagoon, put different materials in the lagoon, different types of plant material, um, and record how many uh, larvae they get and which species they hatch into if you can and that's um, helping us to build up a picture as to how basically to make these things work uh, best and how what you put in them affects the, their success and which hoverfly species turn up and so on. Details of that project are along the bottom of the screen now. So give it a go as you've seen it's really super simple and uh, it seems to usually work um, and you'll be doing your bit to boost the diversity of insects in your garden and that's always going to be a good thing. Thank you very much.